Let's talk about one of my favorite subjects, skill checks in computer RPGs. And by favorite subjects, I mean that this is the worst of the things that computer RPGs inherited from tabletop RPGs. With a party of players and a GM, skill checks work great. They keep everybody involved and they create a little bit of tension and they let the GM measure what everybody's interested in. But in a computer game where it's just you and the computer, a skill check is pretty meaningless. It does accomplish a few things, but those things can be accomplished better with a different framework. And that's what I want to talk about. So first let's talk about the concept of a role-playing game. Uh, obviously the main draw is the fact that you get to play a role, and usually you get to define that role to at least some extent. Now when you decide what kind of role you want to play, you usually create a build for your character that has the ability to do the things that make that role special. If you want to play a thief, then you create a character with high decks and thieving skills. And if you want to create a mage, you create a character that's intelligent and has sorcery skills. If you want to play a clerk or a sage or a priest or a merchant or anybody you want to play, if the character's stats and skills suggest that those actions might be possible, you put points into those stats and skills and you've set up your character such that you can play a role. But assigning the stats isn't playing the role. That's the prep work. That's you defining your role. You play the role over the course of the game as you choose to do things. So if you play a thief and you choose to try to pick a lock, and you succeed, well, guess what? The game has just said, congratulations, you are the role you say you are. You chose to do a thing that that role can do, and you did it, because you are good at it. Hooray! Let's move on. But what happens if you fail to pick that lock? 99% of RPGs will simply say, I guess you're not a thief. You tried to take a thiefy action, and you failed move on. Now this has a lot of negative consequences. One of the big negative consequences is that there can't be anything useful behind that door. And you'll find this the hard way if you have ever played a CRPG as someone that's not like just a war focused combatant. You're like, oh I'm a hacker. Oh congratulations, you hacked open the vault. Here's eight gold coins, roughly the same that you would get for killing a skeleton. You're a thief. Well, you open the door. Here's a health kit. I'm sure you need it because you suck in combat. You spent all of your points on thieving. That's really not great. Uh, I don't take actions in my role to earn a small piddling reward. That's not really what being a role for me is. It's supposed to be integrated into the story. But what's worse than that is the fact that you don't get to play your role if you fail at a skill check. You simply don't get to be a thief. You tried and you failed. And you can argue that this will make you allocate more points to thiefy skills as you move forward so that you won't fail the next thiefy check. But not only is there usually a lot of randomness in skill checks, allocating points is not playing a role. Not unless your role is, you know, game show host. So, I don't think that this is a very good way to let us play our roles. So then I thought about roles in the real world. Like, think about your friends or the people you know, and the things they like to do. Like, maybe you've got a neighbor that really likes to garden, and so they are out there day and, uh, you know, rainy or sunny, they're planting their crops, and tending their garden and trying to get things to grow. And if you actually pay attention, you'll notice that a lot of the times the things don't grow. A lot of the times gardeners fail, especially if they're trying a new crop and stretching their wings with something interesting. What do the gardeners do when they fail to grow something in their garden? Do they go, oh well, I guess I'm not a gardener? No. Usually, they try again next year with a slightly different environment, or they try to grow something else that's a little bit more amenable to their skill level and their garden's condition. When you fail 
a skill check, like say a gardener trying to grow something that they can't figure out how to grow, that's a chance for you to play your role. That's a chance for you to get into your role and take actions that allow you to do the thing you can't do. Like, if I'm a thief, and I try and pick a lock, and I fail to pick that lock, I don't go, oh well, I guess I'll move on. I go, I need to get through this locked door. If I can't pick it, it must be really good, right? If I play a charismatic leader and I flub a skill check talking to someone, I don't go, oh well, I guess charisma failed, time to stab him in the face. I try to find another way to resolve things using speech, maybe by talking to him in a different way, or maybe by using some social leverage, or by going away and coming back later, or by talking to his friends and getting them to vouch for me. I find another way to play the role that I'm trying to play. The role isn't a little bit of spice that you can put in or leave off as you please. The role is the point. I'm trying to be this character. So when we talk about skill checks, in my mind, there are three possible outcomes to any given skill check. One is that you succeed. If you succeed, that's the video game telling you that congratulations, your character can do a thing. Congratulations, you are thiefy enough for the thief club. Congratulations, you are talky enough for the talk club. But generally speaking, there's a lot of randomness here. So even if you're maxed out, you probably are going to fail more than a few skill checks. And obviously, failure is one of the other states where you just give up. This is the RPG telling you that you don't get to play that role. You are not a thief. You are not a priest. You are not a merchant. You are not a sage. Because you just suck at it. Sorry. You're not suitable. Go play the game a different way. At least for a little while. That is a kind of flat-out rejection that feels really gross, and I just, I just don't like it. Um, it's possible that this could be fun in a game where you have a party of characters and the other characters can step in and, you know, shoulder the burden and do things their way. But if you're playing a solo character, you don't want to be told that you just can't be who you are. It's a role-not-playing game. But there is an option between these two, and that is challenge. If I fail a skill test, but I want to keep being whoever I'm trying to be, whoever my role is, I can get to work. I can try to figure out how to actually do the things I want to do in the way I want to do them in a different path. If I'm a thief and I fail to open a locked door, I don't give up. I get more interested. I really want to know what's behind that door now, and if I'm not good enough at lockpicking to get through, that doesn't mean I'm not a thief. It means I didn't allocate my points as well as the game wanted me to. I wasn't a proper game show host today. No, I needed to uh, take a thiefy action besides that. If the door is too locked for my lockpicks, what else can I do to get through the door? Can I burn the lock away using acid? Sure, it uses up valuable acid and destroys the door and will let everybody know that somebody was in here, but I can still get in. Or maybe I can go learn more about that particular lock. Note down the manufacturer, go to a library and figure out what sort of keys that lock uses, find a, the same lock in a warehouse somewhere and just disassemble it and see how it works on the inside. Maybe I can go steal the key. Maybe I can go convince someone to open the door because a light needs changing or whatever. Now, the downside of this is pretty obvious. This is expensive content. If failing a skill test means that you need a whole slew of additional content for the thieves that aren't thiefy enough to just pass the skill test, that seems like a lot of extra content, especially since not everybody is going to be a thief. So that's wasted content for anybody that's a warrior or a sage or a merchant or whatever. But the thing is, I think that this content is not quite as expensive as most people think. 
especially if you're playing a game that's not super focused on the rails of the story like failing a, this sort of challenge and having having a, a backup challenge in something like mass effect probably wouldn't make any sense because in mass effect your role is very laser focused on being a cop or you're, you're a space cop and a really crooked one so it wouldn't really make sense for you to get obsessed with something like picking a lock it's just not in your character but there are an awful lot of kind of open world RPGs, both solo and party, where your role and your experience in the story as that role is more important than the story is. The story is an excuse to let you be in that world and do those things. An excellent example of that would be Baldur's Gate 3, where the story is total crap, at least for the first couple of chapters, and the writing is equally just garbage and the characters are not interesting, but you're allowed to approach that world in any way you please. Aside from the fact that if you scale, fail a skill check, uh, the game tells you that you're not allowed to be that person anymore, not for a little while, because you're clearly not a thiefy enough thief for your thief checks. In case you're wondering why I brought this up. Anyway, let me know what you think.